Hello everybody once again, this is Kazu and welcome back to another video here. This will be another video on mobile games here. And this is one I highly recommend and I wanted to do a video or rather the stream wanted me to do a video regarding this game quite a while back. I actually got almost everyone in my stream to play this game and after they tried it, I can tell you most of them are playing this a lot. Alright, so this is one game I can tell you at this moment definitely better than Dragon Dance Labyrinth. Alright, so I'm going to tell you guys more about this game, a quick overview and why this game is that good. Number one, the graphics guys is extremely cute, alright, 16 bit, bit graphics. Alright, it's not 8 bit, it's 16 bit. You can see these are the bunch of heroes that you can get. And currently right now I have 3 6 star heroes and I'll explain all these numbers very, very quickly here. So the first thing about this game that is very fun is that there is a storyline. So the storyline is from the quest here and you realize that, look at that, episode 1 to 4 and episode 5. So I don't want to spoil the story, basically there are 4 main themes and the reason why there's 4 main themes is because there are 4 different types of goddess. Rather actually 5, alright. There are 5 different types of goddess and basically through the story you unlock each one of them starting with her. I don't spoil the story again, you'll find out the rest yourself. But the, the thing about this game is number one, there is a pretty, I, I would say cliche, but you know, it's a mobile game and they tried. So it's a decent kind of storyline, and each goddess has a different uh, special ability for your party members, alright? So if you look at Bella, gives you 50% uh, neutral attribute damage for 4 seconds, and neutral attribute is very important in this game because it ignores enemies' armor and resistance. So this is very useful if you have themes that are very focused on burst damage. Then Sarah, very good for uh, dungeons or quests in general because you can use a shield that absorbs 100% damage for the first second and 50% 50 50 damage for the next second. So you basically block uh, two damages and the first one you block the full damage. Pristina, you can immobilize enemies. Anut will be Reducing enemies attack power by 50% and it removes all enemy buffs. And last but not least, Aubrey lifts all negative effects from allies while increasing the effect or time of positive effects by 25% for 3 seconds. So basically all these different type of effects will affect your class composition or your character or your hero's composition here because you can only have 3 heroes uh, used at one time. But before you get to that, one thing you realize is you can actually talk to them. Get it? This is the, I would say this is the Sundere. So you can actually go through storyline, you can unlock all these little things. I remember the last time I see such a thing is in Million Arter itself. But Million Arter you do not actually have such nice graphics, it's mostly text and sometimes it's quite funny, you know, like the interact view. I don't spoil again, so you can go check it out. This one is the Lolly, I guess. And even some of the side characters are very pretty as well. And I think the the one that's tomboyish one is her. Anut or Anut. However, we want to pronounce the very quiet one will be Aubrey, and last one Pristina. The I would say the overall nice looking girl. So there's one part about Crusader Quest that's fun, and then the second most important part is this: most games that you play, especially mobile games, you'll feel that it is very pay to play. And the thing about mobile games is such that you know it is the norm for mobile games where you know if you play Clash of Clans, if you play some card games, Brave Frontier. Cash users usually have a significant advantage compared to non-cash users and some games they even have paywalls basically if you don't want to, to spend the cash credits you realize that you cannot advance further than you know certain degrees for certain people like you cannot fight a world boss you cannot get to a certain level so for crusader quest i can tell you that that is pretty much minimized to at i would say at, at its best basically it's minimized as much as it can in the norms or even slightly more than the norms of a mobile game why do I say that, alright? So if you look at the shop, alright, you can actually purchase what we call the contracts, alright? There, diff there are five different classes in this game, sorry, six different classes, the warrior, the paladin, the archer, the hunter, the wizard, and priest. So there are six different classes in this game, and all of them are, have very unique uh, skill sets and everything. I'll go to that as well, this is an overview video. So the thing about all these crystals is you can see at exactly at 50 on top right now which I've saved up and right now they actually updated such that you can actually buy 10 premium contracts for 50 crystals and there's a chance to get a 100% chance to get a contract only hero. What's a contract only hero alright? So in this game what I mean 
the so-called pay to play part, or rather the part where you a lot of people think they're hey, shit, I need to I need to spend money to get certain heroes is the what we call the contract heroes. Alright, contract only heroes are heroes. If it goes to the hero tome here, it's heroes with this little scroll here. It means which means they can only be received by the premium contracts. But the thing is you can earn 50 crystals, I'll say how later on, and you can purchase all these contracts to get those heroes. To get contract only heroes, alright? It's still a chance, it's a chance to get it. And you can see there are various ways of getting it. You can go for a class specific one, but you can get a 2 star all the way to 6 star, which is not very good. And then if you go for a premium contract, it's 3 to 6 star. So it really depends on what kind of heroes uh, you want. But before I go to that first, let me just share with you guys why it is not that uh, money required, or rather, I would say it's very, very much free to play in that sense where you can. Play the, you can enjoy playing the game without spending a single cent. I would say it's designed largely that, that way because the game has incorporated a thing such that every time when you get a hero to its max level at its current grade, which means if you get a 3 star hero to level 30, which is the maximum level for a 3 star hero, you get one crystal, you get one of these crystals. And there are, there are a total of 314 heroes in this game. And this includes the 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star, 5 star, and 6 star versions of those heroes. I.e. if you, for example this hero Leon, you get this by default by the way, this is a free legendary hero that they give you at the start due to the story. And you can level up this guy and upgrade him 6 times and you get 6 gems from him. And this goes the same for all the other 4 star to 6 star heroes. So you have 3 each from for each 4 star hero. And you can earn a total of basically 314 crystals just by leveling their heroes and then upgrading them and then leveling them to the max level again. So 314 crystals is a lot, alright? And it's not hard to get. Like even when you level a, a, a 2 star hero or even a 1 star hero to the max level, you get a gem as well. Look at how many 1 star heroes there are in this game. Alright, so 314 free crystals. The other thing that gets your crystal is through PvP. Alright, let me just go to the PP, the Colosseum for you. You can see that the rank reward here for this is what I call the Master League is 15 gems. Alright, right now I'm getting into the Master League for 3 weeks in a row and I've used crystals for other things but so far I saved up the 50 and yeah, you just get to Master League, you get free 15 crystals here and you can save up all those crystals and yeah, you realize that you don't need to spend at all. Alright, and it's not hard to get to Master League. I have not spent a single cent in this game in terms of trying to get my characters up never done it alright and I was pretty lucky here and there because when you play the game you know all mobile games they give you a free premium contract and kinda depends on a lot some people get something good sometimes people get something very bad so far the overall experience for people that tried this game has been overall positive like they didn't get anything good but eventually they did so that's the next thing so I think the first thing that people want to know is whether the game is very very cash based it is not so that's the second thing you guys need to do. The third thing is the gameplay. All right, let me just share with you guys the gameplay through what we call the practice mode. All right, with the dummy. So how this game work is, you guys do not know what the goddess is for, right? So so the game actually has a damage counter, and this is not just in the dummy stage. In most uh, quest dungeons where you fight, you will see this damage counter. You only do not see this when you fight the world boss because at the end of the world boss, they actually give you an overall uh, stat counter which I'll show you guys will boss fight later on, don't worry. So you can see that there are many blocks that spawn here right now. So if I form 3 blocks, you can see these 3 green blocks I press, I fill up a huge chunk of what we call the Goddess skill bar. And when this bar is filled, you can then unleash your Goddess skill. You can see the one bar is highlighted here which means I can actually activate the Goddess ability one time. So if I continue charging this up, this is the second time here. And let's try to get a third one here. Going. So you can see the blocks are just randomly generated. So you can also use one block at one time, but the goddess bar will charge up very very slowly. Alright. So we have three bars here. So you can use this three times. And the goddess I'm using now is the the Bella uh Goddess. So she's the one that increased my damage. So you can see that my damage per second right now is pretty low. Pretty low. So let's try to bump that up right now by casting some skills. You can average around 17,000. So you can see the timely use of the goddess is very important here, especially when you use skills. So how, what is skills, alright? So every time when you use three blocks, you can see 
on my characters below the green HP bar, there's an empty bar here. And just look at, take a look at the archer here right now. When I press one of the archer skill block, you can see this blue bar is filled up. You can see this blue little bar filled up. So when that bar is filled up, which is what we call SP here on the top left corner of the screen, your skill will proc. So this little blue bubble here is for my archer. And the orange one is for my sword master, or they call it Leon of Light. So once the SP bar is filled, you get a skill. And I'll talk about skills later on. So basically this game has the blocks, you have to combine 3 blocks to get to fill up a goddess bar. And when you fill up your SP bar, when you use a specific block for that class or that hero, you fill up their skill point bar. And when the skill point bar is filled, you get a skill. A skill a block will appear. So these are called the blocks. This is 2 archer blocks, this is 1 warrior block, and that's what the other mechanic about the game. And you don't really see how this is being played out here because I'm just sitting on dummy, so we're going to leave the practice mode here and show you what I mean in a world boss fight where it's gonna get pretty intense alright so we're gonna go to the world boss fight here and this world boss is basically level 45 and world boss fight is awesome because you can actually play with your friend real time supposedly real time but one thing you know is if you're iOS you cannot play with a friend on Android and if you're on Android you cannot play with a friend on iOS Alright, I forgot to mention at the start, this game is for both iOS and Android. So both iOS and Android users can play this game, it's just that it doesn't cross-platform. So when you try to queue, hang on here. When you try to queue, you can see waiting room. So if you want to play with a friend, you have to enter the same waiting room as your friend. So usually for me, when I play with uh, players on stream, we will go to like room 3222. If not, you can click random alley and you will try to source for a random player that's also queuing for a random alley as well. You can see searching for alley. Let's see if we can get someone decent. Alright, found someone. This person is alright. Probably gonna carry him. Hopefully he doesn't flop too bad. But you can see most of the in-game mechanics through the world boss fight. And if you haven't noticed, the BGM is awesome, alright? The BGM is very awesome for this game. So I got 3 blocks now, I'll use it. I'm saving my green block right now. So you can see the boss has an SP bar as well, and you want to use your goddess skills to save your teammates, which is why I pressed it. I'm using uh, Anut for the boss fights because the debuff is very important. You can see the buff has buff as well. So here comes the strategy part where you need to really time your you know your blocks properly. I'm gonna debuff away the attack buff here, which is very important. My teammate almost died there just now. They need to save him. Alright, we're healing up here. So imagine playing with this playing this with a friend. It's gonna be very very fun. And this is just the second hardest uh, world boss for this particular boss itself. And all the bosses are based off the storyline bosses, so you'll be able to see the skill set in the storyline mode itself when you play them, so it's not like you're going to be new to them. And one thing about the world bosses is they change every week. So this is the, actually, this is one of the first stage bosses that you meet, the first storyline boss. But it looks different of course, compared to the storyline. Don't want to spoil you again, because I, I think the story part of the game is, is quite important for the person is going to play Crusader Quest. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a significant part of your experience playing Crusader Quest. Because at the start, you're going to spend a large amount of time trying to... Oh, okay. So I got a 6-star weapon here, which is the highest grade of weapon that you can get. And you can see detailed info here. 121,000 damage, 65,000 healing. I basically carried this guy. Alright. And the thing about world bosses is, if you're the MVP, you get 2 drops instead of 1. So that's why you see sometimes uh, very strong players trying to help a queue for the second level one. With my heroes, I can actually go for the third hardest. I'm not ready for the fourth hardest yet, so if you look at the world boss here again, there's actually four difficulties. And the last one obviously is going to be very hard. Usually when you want to play the last one, right, you may want to use your friend to be a full healing lineup and then someone else be like a two DPS and one healing. So world boss itself, very fun, very challenging, but it's not something you want to take on at the start. But you can see this a decent and fun part of the game when you are 
when you play it for a while, I'm about four and a half weeks or five weeks into the into playing Crusader Quest. So it's not like I played this for like two months. So you can see that in about one month plus, I actually reach I wouldn't say end game, but in a situation where I'm enjoying the game a lot, where I can you know get to the PP, the master rank. So you can see my friends, sweet train here is really goaling. So every week, all right, you can see weekly reward six days left. You have seven days to fight your way up, and every time you start at bronze. So if you're a master player, usually you'll just you'll be able to climb up to the top. And they usually find you players that are around your hero level. You can see this is my this is my ninth round here. That means I fought. I already won eight games previously. Let me just show you guys the PVP here. You can see your reward is twelve honor badges and one meat. So you know, like all other games, your energy is based on meat, and you can use your PvP battles to actually gain back energy, which is awesome. So you know, you run through dungeons, get loots from there, level up with heroes through dungeons, ran out of energy, go PvP, and then you get energy again, and you go back to any, you go back to running dungeons, and then you know the PvP ticket will be up again, and you come back and PvP again. So you can basically play Crusader Quest for a decent amount of time. And you don't need to play it all the way. You can like you know on the MRT train you play a bit, maybe use one ticket, let the let the the counter start to run, and then maybe when you're free you can play again. So I'm gonna show you guys one PvP match here, and tell you guys the importance of the other mechanics here. So you realize that there's goddess, there's hero, and there's leader. So hero is basically for you to just check out the other heroes before you fight, and you can choose who you want. So obviously I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose my three strongest heroes and. Leader, what this means is, wait, leader hero has additional block bonus. And if you go to hero here, I'm going to share with you guys some mechanics here. I'll go deep into it later. Alright, you can see this is the skill block. So if you click it, it tells you summon the holy sword that deals physical damage equal to 56 slash 178 slash 322% of attack power based on the chain number. So basically, if you chain 3 blocks, you will get 322%. And you cannot chain anything more than 3 blocks. So 3 is the maximum. And every time you do that, summons the ultimate holy sword every three blocks. This is why you'll see why I always wait for three blocks before I use the on the light. Number one, you want to make sure that the, the, the blocks hit for maximum damage because you, you realize 56 times 3 is only 178%. So if you click it single block, you'll not get a 322%, which is a lot higher than 178. You see? And after that, you get an uh, ultimate holy sword that deals 380% of attack power and ignores the target's armor as well. And it's equal to your armor. So, for Leon of the Light, you have to you know try to increase your own armor. And my armor now is only four four three. So basically, your this is what I call the passive skill. The passive skill is very strong for Leon of the Light. I'm going to show you guys why right now. As you can see, my PvP. I'm probably going to try and wreck this guy if I can. So this guy is using a Paladin. Paladin is a uh, heroes that has that gives utility and are quite tanky. So this Alexander guy, if he has the correct skill, he can be able to stun me. You can see now I have two blocks of the orange. I'm gonna wait because A Nuts actually reduce the damage. I'm gonna wait here. Wait out for the debuff finish and press. Now this ultimate sword, that's the passive skill. Passive skill again. Bam. See now why Leon is the leader here. Because every time we use three blocks on Leon of Light, you can activate the passive skill. And passive skills is pretty much a game changer for this game for every hero. Why? Every hero that's above 4 stars have a passive skill. So I'll just share it with you guys. Why is it important first? I'm going to show you guys what happens when you win 10 rounds here. It's going to be easy win for me. So sometimes the calibration for PP, you'll meet very very uh, what we call walkovers. Alright. And it's good. Because it's free energy, it's free honor badges, and... Yeah, it's... I guess it's... Fun. You know, to finish finish using your Colosseum ticket, beating 10 op opponents, and then reaping the rewards from it. Of course, the real fun comes when you fight, you know, really strong opponents, and you out... Uh, I would say outplay, because it's a one-sided game, by the way. So one side is AI, and then the other side is you. So... You can see 10 Colosseum wins, well done, please use the nice to continue. So you can win 10 games, and your ticket is used up. And usually 10 games will give you at least 10 energy because when you're in the bronze rank when you're in the bronze rank all right when bronze rank you only start getting meat after i think your third win but once you get to like master or golic you can get like two even up to three in master so when you're in master rank you can really get a lot of meat so but you take a while to get there of course i think it took me every week i gain a rank level for 
First time I played this game, within one week I got to silver, within the next week I got to gold, and then I was stuck in gold for like two weeks, and then finally got the master, and I've been master for the last three weeks or two weeks or so. So it's not hard to get there, guys. Alright, and one more thing I like about the Colosseum is, unlike Summoner Wars, where you know there's a defense portion of the game, and there's also an offensive portion of the game, this game is like win-win, you know, you just, you just need to win in your PP. Obviously when you lose, you actually lose a lot of ratings, this is your ratings that you need to fill up before you get to the next rank. So you can see just now when I won, I get like 10-ish wins, so I'm like quite a bit of wins away to get to go rank as well, but if you consistently play your Colosseum tickets, every time when the ticket is uh, refreshed, you should be able to get there if you don't lose too much. So sometimes, you might meet an opponent that you realize that you cannot win. If you want to get to the next rank for the rank reward here for the crystals, then, you know, don't fight the guy. Because every time when you use the ticket, there's a one hour uh, duration to use it. It's like when you click it, you can only use or PvP within that one hour. If you don't use, if you don't fight within that one hour, then your arena will be closed until you use another ticket. So that's, that's just to let you know. So next thing to let you guys know about this game is the awesomeness of the passive skills. So right now, if you realize that my archer, which is known as Hikari, alright, Hawkeye Hikari, this is one of the best archers in the game. And the reason why this hero, this hero is so strong is because, unlike Leon, alright, unlike Leon, it actually, its passive doesn't proc based on the skill blocks, alright. This skill itself is called this skill block itself is called Wind Arrow. So if you read the skill description, which is blocked right now, but you realize that you know if you use three, it's two to one percent, that kind of stuff. But if you read the passive, every fifth auto attack uh, will launch whirlwind arrows and deals magical damage to eighty percent of the hero's attack power, and it will shoot another one if the hero is buffed. All right, which means every time when you see a uh, Hawkeye Kari fire wind the whirlwind arrow. Alright, and if she's buff, she'll fire 2. Alright, and the fun thing is, the number of arrows increases by 2 every time wind arrows is used. So I think the translation here is a bit wrong. So basically, when you use one skill block, you reduce the requirement for a woman arrow by 2. Which essentially means every time you use 3 wind arrow blocks, you'll fire your woman arrow. And I'll show you guys why this is so strong. But basically, this is what we call a single block uh, hero. Basically, you don't need to wait until three blocks to use the blocks because you just need to keep spamming a single block arrow and your passive keep propping and this hero's damage is largely based on a passive. So I'm going to show you guys right now what I mean. I got a quest here and I'm going to do the pretty hard one. I would say the, the latest one I can do here. Alright. And yep, she is the leader right now. This means that she has more block bonus. And I love the BGM of this game, guys. It's gonna get repetitive once you play it for a long time, but when you first play the game, it is, you'll feel that it's decent. So I can just keep spamming this. So if I fire the next blue block right now, one auto attack, look at that. It's straight away the whirlwind arrow is out, and look at that. All low HP already. All low HP. So this, this is a buff, alright? This is one of the skills that you have. So I'm gonna wait one. Alright, one arrow. Three. Alright, this count. So two. Four. Alright, I'm gonna use the buff right now. And you should be able to see a double right now. Soon. There we go. That's one double there because she was two buff just now. And you realize I'm just tearing through this dungeon right now. And do notice that her whirlwind arrows actually go through to the next wave that is spawned. And basically to realize the rest of my heroes. That's why I have a healer here to keep my tank or my Leon alive, which I'm going to use for the boss later, the boss fight. And you realize I'm saving up my Leon's uh, skills so that we can wreck the boss very quickly here. So this one, also, this buff also increases the attack of my teammates. I'm going to use Bella right now. And should be easy peasy here. It's been a while since I came back to the storyline by the way, and this is the hard mode version of the story quest which you can unlock after you go through all the story quest maps on normal and then you start back at heart. And you can see why Hawkeye Yukari is, they call it the S plus tiered hero that you can get. And I got this from my premium contract when I first played the game, I was extremely lucky. This is a contract only hero and I got her through the free premium contract that they gave. So I was very very, very lucky when I played this game. Liars boys! So, passive skill, one very very cool part about this game. And it's not just Hikari, alright? Let me just show you guys my healer here, passive skill. 
When Whisper of Light, which is the block seal, is used, an early hero will recover HP equals to 100% of the hero's attack power, which means essentially 823 right now, and each hero's auto attack will also recover the same thing. Which means when I cast this skill, it will heal someone, and all my party members' auto attack will recover basically 823 HP every time they attack. And it's very good for my party because Leon auto attacks when he's not using blocks, and Hikari Whirlwind's arrow is based off auto attack. So basically, my my three combination here is very strong for Crusader quest. I would say I'm pretty much good to go until I don't know try other skill lineups for fun. And you can see that when Retriggered while still in this effect, this skill heals all party members up to 5 times. So basically, this is also essentially one of those single block healing heroes, which is very very good, obviously. But of course, you can see if you have 3 blocks, I heal 25% of the hero's attack power based on 200% of the hero's attack power. Basically, it's a lot. Alright, so I think what this healer is, this passive skill, the part where, uh, the retriggering part, and that heals everyone only comes to you when the hero is at 6 star. Alright, so 6 star and below, you realize that there is no uh, party member is healed. I mean, all party members is healed. It's just gonna be the auto attack one. So, this healer is actually not very good compared to other healers until it reaches 6 star, which is what I got her to. Just to let you know. And, just look at the number of heroes in this game. Alright, look at the hero tome. Alright, if you look at every single class, there are so many passive skill combinations. You know, if I look at, let's say, uh, this guy, right? Deals neutral damage, go to 100% of the attack power, and reduce the enemy's armor for five seconds. So there are certain mage classes that has very good burst. Some, some of the interesting ones let me just show you guys is this guy here, which is Archon, which I have but I didn't level here. Is look at that. Using a chain tree skill where you increase the party's defense and penetration, penetra magic, pen magic, magical penetration by 30%. Because slow down. All right, I'm sorry guys, because I don't want the video to be too long. So if your party members are already buffed, it will summon 2 to 4 shock spears that deal magical damage to equal to 40% of the hero's attack. This is very strong as well. And the other one is this. This is also very strong. Enemies hit by Breezing Blizzard will have their attack power lowered. But the awesome one is if this attack is ac accumulated 7 times within 10 seconds, the enemy will be stunned. Essentially, with this hero, you can possibly chain stun uh, enemies and how they do it is I forgot to mention is the skills so I didn't go to the skills yet so every class has a full set of skills look at that I haven't unlocked this tree yet all right so another part of the game is the skills so there are many things okay so you have the skills and the skills have level and you can unlock the levels via there are different requirements they'll tell you so you look at this they'll tell you you need to acquire a three star banshee all right like this, this skill is what I call the Boom Blade Dance, it's called Crescent Moon Rampage. So I got it, and the first requirement was to, I think, have 10 different warriors. Like, you need to meet 10 different warriors. And then to get it to level 2, you need a 4 star Monte Pronto. And you can get this guy through a quest, it's not like, you must get it through contract. And that's one part I missed about as well, is that you can actually get heroes through quests. And they activate based on certain requirements, you can Google it online. Alright, so this quest will actually give me this 4-star Paladin, which is called Alexander, which is why you see many people having it. And this one gives you certain rewards. And the quest, when you first play the game, it is very easy to gain gold, uh, honor badges, and rewards from quests. Like, straight up, uh, I believe. Honor badges, gold, I think that's the main tool that you get. And sometimes you get gems as well. Uh, what else can you get? Yeah, I think gold, gems, and honor badges. This tree mainly. So you can actually get a lot of freebies from the quest as well, and that's excluding what I mentioned, the free, not really free gems that you get, but gems that you can earn just by leveling heroes and meeting new heroes along the way. So how the game works is this, I forgot to mention, okay. How do you actually get a 4 star hero, alright? Every time when you level or you increase the grade of a 3 star, when you increase the grade of a 3 star hero, alright, to 4 star, it will give you a random chance to get one of these 4 star heroes that are non-contract. So the contract ones can only be got, uh, be received from premium contracts, but the ones without the scroll beside them, you realize that you can actually try to get them by, you know, if you read here, when a normal hero is promoted to rank 4, which is 4 star, the hero will become a master hero. So whenever you promote a hero from 3 to 4 star, he has a chance to be one of these here. But legendary heroes can only be received from dungeons, which is another thing that you can do here. And it's also 
a lot of things to mention about this, but I just realized the dungeons have a first clear reward, and they are very nice first clear rewards that you can get from dungeons. Gems again to get that crystals. You can get a one time 5,000 gold. So, clearing dungeons is very good. I cleared everything. And the last one here allows you to get the different legendary heroes for uh, the game. Alright, so the legendary Garner can only be received from dungeons. And then next week, you'll see maybe a uh, healer and archer. So it changes every week and basically you can only earn legendary heroes of other classes or the same class if you want to get double Leon, which you can put in your lineup through uh, ancient dungeons. So if you go to the hero tome, you can read legendary heroes have 50% uh, higher stats on average. So legendary heroes in general are usually very good, but they are not like the best heroes that you can get. In the end, it, de it depends on your 3 class compositions to, I would say, make the full use of your passive skill of the 3 heroes that you have. Alright, so I have the... I managed to get the wizard one, I managed to get the hunter one, don't have the archer one, I have the paladin one. So I'm basically short of 2, I think, archer and the healer. Yeah, archer and healer, so I don't have these 2 yet. But my Hikari is very strong. So what else am I missing here? Anything else? Okay, so the next question is Kazoo, how do I get or how do I rank up my heroes? How do I get my heroes to the next rank? Or how do I, you know, go about doing that? So if you go to our heroes right now, I'm going to show you guys through an example here. Okay, I have many max level uh, 3 star heroes. Alright, so before you can actually uh, do what we call promotion here or rank up, you need to get the hero to 3 star first. Alright, and how do you do that? So let's see if I have 2 star heroes. Okay, I got one 2 star hero here. So you go to this thing called training or train. And you realize that this is stage 0 out of 1. So if I want to get this guy to 3 stars, I need to make sure that I fill up this stage to be 100. So I put, I give him a cross on here. And this is basically bread in the game. Very interesting. You feed your hero's bread all right, to fill up the stage bar. So for 2 star heroes, they only need 100. And they only need 1 stage. So I'm just going to show you here. So here's stage 1. And you reach the next stage, you get 10% more stats. All right. So you can see, now the promote is highlighted here, and I'm going to promote him. You need honor badges for promotion, so this is what honor badges is for. And you're going to get a random he uh, hero when you rank up from... Basically, it's all random until 4 star. 4 star onwards is not never going to be random, it's going to be what you get. So I got this little teddy bear guy, he's going to be 3 star, which I already have, if you realized. And again, if you want to train him, now he has 2 stages. Alright, he has 2 stages, and you need to get him to... Uh, level 30, alright, so I do have a level 30 bear here, I'm going to show you. Okay, so he's max level, and this means that you have already got him max level uh, one time, and if you get another brave dog and you get him max level, you will not receive the gem reward that I told you about. So now there's two stages, so the first stage is also 100, alright. So I'm going to show you guys another thing is what we call, you can see this thing called the great rate, alright, the great rate. Okay, so what does that mean? You can see, this rice donut is 54 value, which means it only increases this by 54, but it has a great 70%. So if I put it, you can see the great 70% here. What this means is I have a 70% chance to get a great proc. And great proc, when you feed your heroes, is it will have 1.5 times more value. So right now, if you take 1.5 times 154, I have a chance to increase uh, it by... Basically, it can be 154 times 1.5, which can be worth 231. Uh, value here, which is not enough because the next stage requires me to have 300 I believe. So I can feed a uh, pretty lousy food here. Now it gives me 90% chance great rate. And I'm going to train here, you can see. Okay, I only got good, so I didn't get a great, which is unfortunate. 90% chance that I didn't get. And you realize that stage 2, you need 700 here, which I have only given 94. So let's try not to mess up this time. We need to feed him 2 cream breads and... Let's see... A rice donut here. And probably... Another... Okay, we're gonna give him a sandwich. So this is what we call over. I'm giving him too much, so I'm gonna take away one cream bread. And put a croissant here. So it's 500. I think we need more... Okay, we're just gonna try here first, alright. So 90% chance again. <laughs> Let's hope I get a great this time. Okay, I got great, you can see I got 717, alright, and I get to stage 2. So when I'm stage 2, I can actually promote. So this is the time where you see I get to a 4 star and this will be entirely random. 
And the promotion cost, the number of badges increases as well. So let's see what I get here. Okay, so I actually got a uh, Kauri, which I already have already. And why Kauri is important here is because a 5 star Kauri. Alright, let me just show you. This skill transfer is how you actually get your heroes to actually equip a skill. Kauri, you need a 5 star Kauri to actually unlock this thing called a Heaven Slash. Alright, so if you do get a Kauri, get it to 5 star and you unlock this thing called Heaven Slash. And the level 3 version, alright, you read this Ascendance Requirement. Alright, there's like when you try to transfer, you will realize that there'll be like success. So, transferring skills, there's no failure rate, but there's a chance for a proc, which is great success, and you, that means that you get a plus one level. And the plus one level of Heaven Slash has full iframe. Alright, your hero will be entirely invulnerable during the casting animation when you get it at level 3. It's very hard to get a great proc rate, but I can tell you that Heaven Slash, very useful skill, which is what my Leon is using right now as a skill. Get it to level 3, full iframe, and you need Kauri to unlock this skill, alright? And if you realize, this is actually what they call the uh, advanced special skills and you only you can only equip it to 5 star heroes. And you look at this, the rest is like 3 star plus, 3 star plus, but this one, Heaven Slash, there are, I believe there are 3 advanced skills. No, there's 4 now, they updated it. So there's 4 advanced skills and all have different requirements. This one you need Drone of Arc 5 star, this one you need Devil Vivian, and this one you need Devil Hunter Abel, or Abel. So they all can only be unlocked if you get a 5 star version of those heroes. So this is where when you try to get, you know, another 4 star heroes come in. If you really want to unlock those uh, advanced skills for 5 star heroes and you go down here, they are all non-contract. So this is Drawn of Up, you need to get a 5 star to get it. This is Vivian, alright. This is Abel, also, okay this one is contract though. And the last one I believe is... Kauri, yes, Kauri. So we, I got Kauri already, and Kauri is not a uh, contract. Vivian is actually contract though. So you can see that I think 3 out of 4 is non contract, 1, 2, or rather 2, 2. So 2 out of 4 is non contract, and 2 is contract. But as I mentioned, very easy to get uh, crystals in this game, so it's not too bad. And I think we come to the last thing, which is weapons, alright. So all these things that I'm telling you, t I'm telling you when you go through the tutorial, they'll, they'll share with you, okay? But basic weapons, I got a 6 star. Volcano just now for Paladin, and I'm going to show you guys. So weapons, there are many different kinds of weapons, alright. So 6 star weapons have 3 options, 5 star also have 3 upgrade options, 4 star have 2, and 3 stars have 2 I believe, and 1 star have 1 basically. So I don't think I have any more low ranking weapons. I don't. So let me just show you guys uh, 4 star, you can see 4 star has 2, and you can see it's attack and defense, and there are some weapons here that has like three attack. Look at this, three attack, and it's very useful for heroes that have uh, that focus on uh, DPS. And you can go on upgrade info here to tell you. Look at that. These are all the available upgrades that you can get, and it, it unlocks depending on your hero level. I mean your character level. Sorry. So when my my character level now is 44, so I unlock everything pretty much. And this means that I can get some nifty uh, upgrades. You can see at the start it's only like what. You know, hero attack power 10%, now you can get 10 to 25%. So this is the part where you, what we call the gold thing here, you, you will spend a lot of money on this because 6 star weapons cost, let me just show you okay, look at 3.2k base and this doubles every time when you upgrade. So I'm just going to upgrade this to show you guys. And like skills, there's a chance to get success and there's a chance to get great. And great means you can actually get better parameters than the actual ones that are here. So for example, if I get a hero att attack power increase 30%, that means I got a great version of the level, level 35 one. And the unfortunate thing is you can get the level 1 version of upgrades as well. So you can see armor penetration plus 82 here is definitely this one, level 5 upgrade uh, option here. And you can see the better version is the 100 to 250, which is I, di I didn't get it. So let's try the defense one. Damage reduction by 8% is also the, the lower level version one. And let's see for function. Oh, this is decent. So 14% crit chance here if you look at function. It is actually quite good. Level 30 version and it's halfway. So I got a decent one for the function, but this two kinda bad. And if you look at uh four star weapons here, 
Okay, that's a lot cheaper. 1.4k. I think this is the second try already. This is like the third try. So, know that 6 star weapons have higher base damage than C. 117 compared to 61 for 5 star, but it's pretty much the gold thing. And how you get gold in this game is no quests, you run dungeons to get it, and every week on a Sunday for dungeons, right, there are actually three different kinds of dungeons, alright? This one is the ancient dungeon, there's a goblin dungeon, gold goblin dungeon to get a lot of gold. And last but not least, you have this bakery, okay, I forgot to forget to mention about the bread. So, remember just now when you needed to use a uh, bread for hero training? Like to get them to different levels. So you basically bake your bread. And right now, if you are and it's unlocked by level, so at the start you can only use a small oven. I think level 10 you get medium and level 15 you get large oven. And this one I think you need level 20. I can't remember exactly. But this one is 24 hours to bake. This one is I think is it seven hours? I think it's seven or six hours. Medium oven is three hours and small oven is one hour. So right now because I want the best bread, the rank fry breads. Uh, I go for the stone oven which is 24 hours and for the bakery dungeon that comes on every Friday and it will last until Saturday it allows you to get 3 star to 6 star breads which is very important for you because right now if you look at my 6 star heroes alright let me just show you okay look at that there's 5 stages now and I forgot to mention another ghost thing is actually uh, training your heroes because right now one, one bread will cost me 4.9k to upgrade and this increases with stages. So by the time I hit stage 4, let me just show you my Hikari, so it's all 4.5k, right? Because my Hikari right now is plus 4. One bread, oh, it's still 4.9, so I'm wrong, sorry. Let me correct myself. So a 6 star hero, one bread costs 4.9k, which means if you use 6 breads here, alright, 6 breads times 4.9k is actually 30,000 gold, alright? And even if I use all my best breads right now, I will not hit 10k. And that's where you realize, look at look at all the low ranking breads that I have. Look at all the crossing. It's not gonna hit 10k man. If I use uh let's say six crossings, I'm paying 30,000, alright? And I only get look at that 1.7k, which is obviously not worth the wow. So basically what you usually do for breads is you put in the ones that have zero value. I mean zero great value, which is like the strawberry pie, look at that 330. And you put in 170, and then after that you put 120% bread, which is like the pizza. And you get 100% great rates, so that you can multiply the value that you get by 1.5 times. And that is very important here guys, that's another tip that you guys should know. But know that this is also another ghost thing, and you can get bread from your normal dungeon as well. It's not just from the bread dungeon, it's just that different dungeons have different, you know, look at that. Bread 1 to 4 stars, different dungeons have different rewards, and of course, Normal modes of the dungeons will give you lower rank stuff. So you want to clear your quest until hard mode so you can get better rewards when you're running uh, story quests as well. But so far, just one tip, if you hit hard mode and you want to farm gold, go for 1-6, alright? Chances of the monsters dropping the chest for gold is very high and you can get up to 4, sometimes 5 chest drops as gold at the end stage and gives you an average of 400 to up to even 1000 gold when you run this dungeon per run and it's only 5 energy so it's pretty good just to let you know a tip I think that's all right I think that's all for Crusader Quest it's an awesome game awesome mobile game I highly recommend it because it's very fun the class compositions part is uh, very interesting the goddess you can play around with the goddess that you want depending on PvP or PvE the effects are good great storyline great sound and I'll say overall you know, you don't need to pay at all to play this game. And World Boss, you can actually fight real time with your friends. That's awesome. Yeah, do check out uh, Crusader Quest if you want to. I highly recommend this game. If you have only time to play one mobile game like me, and you don't want to spend too much money in the game, play this game. And of course, if you want to support the game, you can you can spend. Or you can save up 50 crystals like me and get 10 people contracts at one go. But that's it for you guys. Crusader Quest, check it out. You want to add me? Secret SW here. I think this is actually uh, called Miss Lisbeth. Let me try to find her. You can have only up to 50 friends, guys. So, oh no, she's Miss Liz. So, if you want to add Liz, she's M S L Y Z. She's also playing this game, but she's on iOS. I'm on Android. My name is Aqua Kazu. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching once again. God bless. If you want to, if you want to see more Crusader Quest tips and stuff, let me know in the chat. I mean, in the comments, God bless, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.